What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on this 6 liter turbo here on the bench. I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys what the guts looks like on the inside. I know I didn't show it in the last turbo video that I did for the 6 liter showing how to remove it off the truck, but some people obviously want to go a little further. So without further ado, get your tools ready, get your gloves on, because we're getting dirty. Here we go. Let's do it. Okay, so this came off of a 2006 with about 140 thou up on the clock, and before I turn it back in for the core, I thought this would be a good time to show you guys what it looks like inside of a nasty turbo that was not functioning correctly. Um, this gentleman was pulling a fifth wheel trailer and was complaining that his wrench light was coming on with some turbo codes, which I never could verify, but needless to say, I've been down this path many times and the turbo seems to be the issue. So, all right, let's uh, go over what we're going to use for tools. We're going to do our Milwaukee set like we always do, but um, we're going to do the 8 milli for my heat shield. Sometimes those are all rotted and um, real difficult to remove. And then we are going to go for the 5 sixteenths 12 point and I got a 3 8 adapter on it and we're gonna actually go and spin off all of these fasteners take that impeller housing off and then we're gonna go for the VGT and we're gonna go ahead and pull that out of the half so let's get set up here and we're gonna start doing this okay I'm gonna go ahead and start by ripping off all these does it help if I turn my light on at all Let's see what it looks like with the light. Tell me in the comment section, have you guys ever had to do this before? Um, if you're in a dealer or in an aftermarket setting. We used to do this a long time ago when I'd say 05, 06, there was a TSB, a technical service bulletin, that had you replace the center housing rotating assembly, the CHRA, and that is pretty much this whole middle guts, and you'd have to rebuild it, and re-index the clamp, and, and the whole turbine housing and whatnot, so it was kind of a kind of a pain in the butt to do. Um, I remember doing like the cost, not cost cap, but comparing the cost of replacing the CHRA and just replacing the whole turbocharger and you know, the labor for me to break it down and you know, da da da, it was like $75, $80 difference and you didn't get some of the parts on this side or the VGT uh, when doing that. So I thought it, in my eyes it was way better for the customer just to replace the whole turbo. So um, that's what we do. I don't, I don't know if they even still have that available. I think they probably do, but myself, I haven't done that in a grip. So, we can see what that looks like in there. That's probably one. I'm sure the air cleaner doesn't help that it had on this. Had one of those oiled air filters, but uh, the CCV, I'm sure, is uh, a big factor in the way that that looks. And it does not, uh, doesn't look pretty. Let's see if we can rip out this VGT. Same thing, these bolts. I've also used the 8 milli 12 point, but this is the setup that I've been using. I just keep it on here. It's pretty much the only thing I use it for, so. Where's that part number, if you guys are wondering? So, for this one, you just get just a screwdriver. You're just gonna go right here in that crack, and I'm just gonna twist the screwdriver. Just pop this valve out. Check this out. Let's get a rag. Kind of wipe it off. You can see any debris on the screen. But what I'm concerned about is this plunger's ability. Let's see if this is all gummed up. 
and it's moving, I feel just right there. Just a little stick, a little stiction right there, but it's moving. So it's not seized. So next, remember I said we're gonna do that heat shield. Sometimes these can round off. See what I mean? successful on all three. This does come with the new turbo, so I don't ever have to transfer that over. So if we were going to be replacing that center housing rotating assembly like I was explaining, there's a procedure to remove this clamp and then you're going to have to mark each half so that they go back exactly where they're supposed to be. They can't be cocked a, a different uh, a space, or not space, but they can't be cocked in a different location than how they came apart. So it's really crucial uh, to emphasize that when you are doing this and you have to reuse it to you know, make sure you're gonna mark it correctly. So that band clamp is just like all of our other clamps up on this engine, and that's 11 milli. Go ahead and take the nut all the way off. That kit, you'll get a new clamp. I always save these nuts because sometimes they uh, come off of the charger cooler clamps and can't find them so it's always good to have extra extra 11 mil clamp bolt so right now I'm gonna stand this on its turbine side and we are going to crack this clamp loose like right now I can't well I can move just this side but this side's stuck so you can get your air hammer or a hammer and you're just gonna pop this loose okay see what I just did she's all the way loose so now you want to actually pull this clamp apart see how I'm pulling this apart you want to pull this all the way apart so now you can actually move that all the way around again you'd want to mark where this clamp was because this clamp has to go back in the exact same position but we're not going to worry about that because we're not reusing this. Next, we're going to separate these two halves. There's a couple things you can do. You either can get your hammer and your screwdriver and try to crack this loose. You get a drift, do the same thing. What, what I've done is I've gotten my air hammer and just carefully separated the two, being mindful that sometimes you have to reuse this. So I'm going to go right for this crack here, I'm just going to be real gentle. start to separate right now so don't go ham and keep going you know forcing all the way through okay starting to lift up now I'm gonna stop with the air hammer you guys are probably looking at that like oh my gosh look what you just did that can be totally cleaned up with your little angle grinder so not to fret okay ahead and separate this the rest of the way. Definitely is rusted. Okay, you can see the two halves are wobbling. So now all you're gonna do is pull up somewhat not easily. And pull up and separate halves. This is, is the center housing rotating assembly right here. This is what 
the VGT plugs into. This is what spins the unison ring. The unison ring attaches to this little post and you can actually just hear the oil squirt out. The VGT is what moves this and underneath this is the, oh, let me give you a better shot. For, for anybody that doesn't know what their guts of their six liter turbo looks like, this is the unison ring. That little post that I showed you is what spins this via oil pressure. You can see you got max boost, you got no boost. You got max boost, no boost. The, the part that we have problems with is this unison's ring's ability to move back and forth between the surface on top of these veins. But more importantly, when it gets pitted and rusted to, let me take this clamp off. Uh, I'll just leave it on. Pitted and rusted to this surface. So a lot of guys, I have read and I have been known to do it myself back when these were first 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 out was we would clean this you grind this all down put some anti-seize never seize whatever you want to call it either put a new unison ring on it because sometimes the unison ring would actually crack right here because it was so stuck so it was either so you give the, the customer some options either you replace the whole turbo you clean it like I had just described with grinding off all that rust here and replacing the needed, needed parts or do you replace that whole center housing rotating assembly and just replace the guts, the middle part of the turbo. So it's always in my eyes better to just do this. I mean if, you, if it's your truck and you're doing it yourself and you're trying to save some money and you don't have any broken parts then I would say cleaning it up would be okay and adequate for that that particular scenario but if you're somebody who's using this as a work truck can't afford the downtime and would rather just have a new component on your truck remember if you're gonna get any parts from motorcraft or ford they all come with a two-year unlimited mileage warranty um you know been bought from the dealer or a reputable licensed ford parts seller but um yeah, tell me what you guys think about this. I don't usually go too farther than this. Uh, I'll show you real quick what, what the veins look like. Take this off. Remember, alignment with all this is very crucial because you have to line all these things back up. But this is the actual vein that the exhaust flow hits, and this is what spins. This is what spins our turbo. I don't know if any of you got that, but that's... That's our, our turbo breakdown. I don't ever really go further than this. It's just not worth my time and I don't have any serviceable parts to get for this except for this whole housing set. Tell me what you guys think about that in the comment section. If anybody's ever had to do this to their six liter turbo, if they had to do it themselves or take it to a repair facility. Thanks so much for watching and remember always to like, comment, sub, and share. I'll see you guys next Friday. See you.